Sessions podcast. My name is Penelope and you can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Miss Red Pen. Today is Saturday the 20th of August 2016 and this is episode 2 Electric Boogaloo coming to you from Bacchus Marsh in Victoria, Australia. So how are you? I'm well apart from feeling a bit cold because it's like 10 degrees outside um, I think that's about I think it's about 50 degrees Fahrenheit so yeah a bit chilly um, but yeah apart from that feeling a bit fancy because I've just had my hair done this morning um, routine hair appointment to get done every couple of months so I've got that sleek salon feel going on um, my stylist is a young lass named Molly at Diva Hair Design She's only 19. 19! And she's fabulous. Um, but the salon's about to be rebranded with this cool name, The Brazen Fox. Um, and I'm really looking forward to seeing where that new direction takes them. Since I saw you last, um, there hasn't really been quite as much knitting and spinning as I would have liked, but I'll um, get to that later on. Been a bit of gardening. The rose bushes out the front need a serious hacking before spring started. So I went and did that basically after I finished doing the last podcast. And I'm still recovering from some of the scratches. There's a couple of marks on me. Last weekend, had to spend the whole weekend giving the house a deep clean ahead of our rental inspection. It's kind of nice to be able to do it on my own. The husband was away at a conference, so I basically had the whole weekend to just potter and clean, but because of the way I faff around when I'm cleaning, do a little bit, have a rest, do a little bit more, get distracted, then come back to it, basically means that um, probably what would take a normal person a day took me the whole weekend. Um, so the inspector was meant to be on Wednesday, but they didn't show up and now they want to come back and do this inspection again this week so you know you, you put in all this effort and then nothing happens it gets a bit annoying but it's all within the law so that's the way it is anyway enough ranting so let's move on to the first segment so this first segment is a new one for week two and it is called On The Rack. Um, this segment is where I'm going to talk about what I'm wearing. Um, this one happened all the time, but when I think it's something of note. First thing to, to mention is the dress that I'm wearing. It is from a local plus size designer and the brand is Hope and Harvest. And this is their super chic hoodie dress in the olive colorway. And it's a nice warm winter dress and I can't I won't show you but it's got this actually I will show you it's got this little double handed pockety thing at the front where you can stash your phone or keys or just keep your hands warm whatever but also check this out how cute is this I am a hobbit <laughs> I hope they keep this as a regular item for quite some time because I'm going to be stocking up on a few more of them next season I reckon Okay, so if everything's looking a bit different than it did before the cut, um, that's because I had to get up to turn the heater down and in doing so, I tripped over one of the lights and had to readjust it a bit. Anyway, um, what I wanted to talk about next was the brooch that I'm wearing, keeping with the theme of brazen foxes today. Well, foxes at least, maybe this one's not so brazen. Um, it's from a Tasmanian designer called Dick and Dora and it is called their Timber Hunter Fox brooch and I picked it up on Heart to Find. Um, which is a strange name for the website because the website is not particularly hard to find and fairly easy to navigate. The only word of caution I can give you about wearing this one is that the pin is super sharp and I have stuck, stabbed myself more than once putting it on and taking it off so that's just a word of caution. So let's move on to the next segment. Actually before we do let's talk about today's drink. This is a spiked masala chai latte. A bit tasty and helping to keep me cold, keep me warm in this cold weather. All right now let's move on to the next segment.
This next segment is a short segment but a sweet segment because it is finished objects. That's right, I have something finished. The hitchhiker that I was working on last time is off the needles and ready to wear. Well, just as soon as I sew in those ends. But um, it is done. Um, I think I ended up going over the 42 teeth that the project says you make and I think I've got about 43 or 44 and I still have a little bit of yarn left. I'm yet to weigh it and figure out how much there is left but um, it's done and it's wearable. Um, it probably doesn't need to be blocked but I will do it because it is a good habit to wash and block your projects before you wear them and that's it. That's not too bad. Most colours go together actually. So this again is the Walmart Pure 4-ply and in the end, yeah, I, I don't really like love knitting with Woolmice. Um, I'm probably going to de-stash after all a couple of skeins that I've got tucked away. Although I do have a beautiful red lace that I acquired on somebody else's de-stash that I'm still going to knit the top from um, at some point in the future but the other couple of skeins that I picked up when I got this one yeah time to go let the old stuff out so that new stuff can enter all right well that's all there is for finished objects so let's move on to the next segment So sticks and stones may break my bones, but whips and stash excite me. Let's see if you can guess which song I nicked that one from. Um, so, works in progress. There's um, a little bit to show you this week. Um, mostly um, I've been spinning in addition to madly trying to finish off the hitchhiker that I just showed you. So um, I finished spinning the single and have gotten part way through the plying. Um, I am plying it as a three ply using the Navajo um, and what that's ended up doing is just really emphasizing how thick and thin the yarn has come on this spinning. Um, about two thirds of the way through when the yarn snapped and I just thought oh well I'll leave it there and fix it or do it as two separate little skeins um, after I finished filming today. So it's really interesting looking at sort of where I've been spinning over the last couple of weeks to where I was at when I first started doing it um, a few months ago because I think my spinning might have been a bit better then and I lost some technique after not touching it for so long. It's getting there and I do have the other braid to do at some point in the future don't think I'm going to do it the same way. Um, I might ply it with either a black or a white to give it a different effect to make a different garment. So that's that one. Um, moving along, the this is again the waiting for rain that I was working on last time. Haven't made that much progress since I showed it to you last time. Um, there's my little progress marker. So maybe maybe that eight or ten rows. I'm pretty close to the point of starting the next lace repeat so maybe by next time that'll be done or at least well underway. Again this is the waiting for rain pattern and the yarn is the nightshade colorway from Gin and Tonic on her three ply organic merino. And again, I'm just going to say again, it is so squishy. Next one I'm going to show you today is one that has been in the naughty corn for quite some while, but um, I think it's time to bring it out of the naughty corner and just get it finished. It is a hat that I started knitting a few months ago. It is the um, stockinette slouchy hat. Uh, put the correct details in the show notes but I got to the point where um, I've been knitting it in the round and I'm about to move on to DPNs just to do the top little bit after the decreases and this happened. I got about six stitches in and I 
I snapped the needle. So um, I don't know if it was just a slightly dodgy needle or because I was moving from metal tips onto the wooden and so the pressure that I'd been using on the wooden needles was just too much. And so it came off in my hand and I thought, no, I cannot deal with this. I can just sit there until I'm ready to look at it again. And that's it now. But I thought I'll just show you one other thing before I put it away. Um, I was getting a bit bored with just going around and around and around. So I did a little bit of a cable twist just in that one spot for a bit of interest while knitting. Because of all the variegation in the yarn, it is not really showing up that well. But that doesn't matter. It was fun to do. And maybe if I ever get around to doing one again on a more plain base, I will... Do it again maybe. Uh, just, just for noting this yarn is one by Fab Funky Fibers um, who I think is in the UK and the colorway I cannot remember off the top of my head so I'll drop it in the show notes as well. This is a really nice base to knit with. I think it's just a sock base um, merino nylon blend but again I will confirm that but that colorway is right up my alley with all the aquas and blues and purples and things so Yay! And then the third one and last one for this segment is this pair of socks. They have been sitting in the oh god, why haven't I just finished it pile? Um, so this is again Fab Funky Fiber sock yarn with the 15 stripe rainbow. It's really pretty. The only thing that's left to do is to put that heel in and I don't know why I've been so anxious about starting that heel. It's an afterthought thought heel pattern. Um, there, there is no rhyme or reason to why I haven't done it. It's just something like second sock syndrome maybe. Um, but I'm hoping that talking about it here and shaming myself into getting it finished so that next time I can show you a completed pair of socks. Wouldn't that be awesome? So. Let's move on to the next segment. Last episode I called this segments dash acquisitions, but this time I'm, I'm changing it to stash stories because I'm not just going to talk about new things all the time. Um, I think I've got a lot of adorable yarn already in my stash that is worthy talking about. Um, I really want to shout out and promote local, you know, Australian and New Zealand indie dyes. I think it's important to support our local communities as much as possible. And if I can just be one voice in the sea that helps us to do that, just feels it feels right. That's why I'm doing it. Um, so I will start off with the item that was from my stash that I wanted to talk about. It is this sock yarn from a local Victorian dyer called Candy Apple Lane. This um, one I picked up at the Bendigo show two years ago and it is the, no sorry, last year, 2015, and it is the Merlin colorway. Yeah, I am um, Got in touch with Candy Apple Lane yesterday just to see if um, this fiber and colorway was still on offer. And I can confirm that you can get the colorway, but um, they've changed the base. This was a 7525 merino nylon base, um, and she is switching over to an Australian based um, sock yarn. So that, that's pretty cool. Um, so I can't compare what the new base will be like, but I can say that this colorway, which is, look at that, all these purples and blues, and again, you see a bit of a theme happening here and behind me. Um, aqua, aqua blue purple, that family are probably my favorites that I lean to the most. And I also really love red and gray and black and silver. Um, anything that's warm in that super, you know, from the, corally tomato colors through to um, yellow and brown really warm browns I'm just not a fan of at all um, and it will be a rare day for you to see me knit 
with something that is that wall. Occasionally something will interest me, but um, you'll look at a colour and go, why are you knitting that? But it could be because it's coming as part of a club or even though it doesn't fit with the family, that particular shade just grabs me. Like I've got one here. Um, this is a sock yarn that came um, the Cookie A Sock Club a couple of no, last year. Um, it is showing up a little bit more orangey on the screen, but it's the colours of peaches and cream. And normally I wouldn't like it, but for some reason it just works for me. I mean, I wouldn't wear it in my face. It's it's um, being turned into socks, but um, yeah, I still like that one. Now the other things I wanted to show you, there is going to be a bit of rattling again, so I will apologise for that now. Um, it is from the Stray Cat Socks. And look at this cute box that it comes in. And I don't know if it was Australia Post or New Zealand Post, but somebody squished the box a bit and I did my best to hack it back into shape um, so that I could show you. Um, so this is one that I picked up um, for a specific project and let's take it out of its little box. It is a self-striping sock yarn and it is 80% superwash merino, 10% cashmere and 10% nylon and it is the grace colorway so it's um, purples and white and blue there. Um, I bought this because I thought for some reason I didn't have any more self-striping sock count in my stash, but it turns out I do. But anyway, that's not the point. The point is that this is going to be used um, probably, I'll kick it off in September, maybe October, to do a pair of um, the Mystic Spiral socks. Um, Mystic Spiral is one of the really common patterns, or popular patterns I guess I should say, on Ravelry. And um, what I'm going to do is binge watch Daria while I knit these socks. Now, for those of you who don't know Daria, it is a cartoon show that I think was on MTV in the 90s. Um, uh, but there is this dodgy band in it called Mystic Spiral. Um, I don't... Well, I do know. It's, 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 it's a cute show <laughs> and it's full of all that cynical bitterness that those of us who were teenagers and 20-somethings in the 90s kind of relate to um, in that kind of reality bites genre, I guess. Um, interesting fun fact, and those of you who already know this are going to roll your eyes, but Daria is a spin-off of Beavis and Butthead. I never actually liked Beavis and Butthead, but Daria is way cool. To go with this, I also bought something that comes, look at this cute little sticker, so I will open it for, bear with me while I make some noise, I might edit this out if it's too much, but I might not. Do away from the microphone now, probably. So, nifty little sock bag for the project because who doesn't like having extra project bags and particularly ones that go with their projects that's a winner so that can go right in there ready to go that's a really good drawstring actually um right in this bag they did have these bags in a bunch of different colors and combinations but this bright pink works for me while i'm not not a huge fan of pastel pink in any way um Really bright pink kind of works for me. Oh look, check it out! They're basically the same colour. That's exciting. <laughs> Alright, um, let's move on again to another segment. This next segment is one where I'm going to talk about a knit along I'm thinking of hosting. Um, definitely tell me what you think about this idea and um, we will confirm in the next episode whether we go ahead with it or not. Um, it's a knit along or craft along, so crochet or weaving, that's the other one, weaving, or whatever craft you think is appropriate. Um, and I'm calling it the transitions knit along. 
slash craft along and it will be on both Ravelry and Instagram. Uh, now I'm calling it transitions um, because well I was originally thinking of calling it like spring into summer or spring fling or something like that and then I realized that would be a bit hypocritical. I am quite passionate about when you're making um, Sorry, when, when you're talking to a global audience that you shouldn't um, speak about things seasonally because you are effectively cutting out or ignoring or reducing your effectiveness for half of your potential audience. And I don't think that's particularly cool and it's a bit insensitive to people who are in the depths of winter when you're talking about how to get that summer glow. What what this knit along will involve is knitting or making something to take you through from your current major season to the next one. So from, from spring to summer or from autumn, autumn into winter for any of the Northern Hemisphere participants. Uh, kicking off on Friday the 9th of September and ending on the 23rd of October. I am going to have some prizes for this one as well if we do it and um, what these will be I can announce if we decide to go ahead with it. So let me know in the comments below or message me on Ravelry or on the blog as well or um, because if, yeah, if, if we go ahead with this, I will then set up a Stash and Notions podcast group on Ravelry. But if we if we don't want to go ahead with it, that's cool too. I'm, I'm totally down with that. And the other thing I was thinking of doing is a kind of um, launching this and I'm getting to know people who are watching these videos as well, is having a virtual knit night via a Google Hangout. Um, it would be on... So a cast on party essentially um, on that Friday the 9th of September night for people who can join in. Um, tell me what you think about these ideas because this whole podcasting thing is obviously completely new to me. Um, it's all trial and error. Even getting the lighting and the microphone audio stuff right is new. Editing. A month ago I'd never even used an editing software package before and now here I am pretending I know what I'm doing in Adobe Premiere Pro. So I just thought it'd be fun and I want to see what you're inspired to knit. Um, I have already found the yarn that I would use for this. Um, it is an Egyptian cotton that I think is an eight-ply cotton but I'm not 100% sure. It doesn't have a tag on it, so I'm going to have to figure that out. But the pattern, I'm still searching for the right pattern. Something probably a bit open and lacy, so, you know, warm enough for those cooler spring nights, but still light enough to take you through in summer. So I think that's that. I think that probably brings us to the end of today's episode. Um, before I do wrap up though, I've got two special things to mention and they are happy birthdays to my best friend on Wednesday, Allegria, and on Thursday, happy birthday to the husband. Happy birthday, darling. Um, so, thank you again for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this please give me feedback um, what you would like to see more or less of um, definitely let me know what you think of the idea for the knit along and I will see you next time bye <laughs>